Hello, we have a lot to talk about in this chapter review because we also got the gear fifth review reveal on the in the anime, which I watched today as well. I'm really excited. It looked amazing. So I'm going to talk about that as well as the chapter, but there will be timestamps if you don't care about the anime talk because I don't watch the anime except for a couple of special episodes like this one. So I'm not the person to hear an opinion from. Also, I've been away for the weekend on a hiking trip, which was amazing, but I just walked back in the door of my house like an hour ago. So if I seem tired, it's because I am. So the anime episode is one of those rare instances. I'm not an anime watcher. I haven't been able to get into anime. I know it seems weird because I read manga and I love it, but I haven't. But this is one of the few instances like Queen's Zuma 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 song where I think that the episode elevated what happened in the manga a lot. I loved the effects on the ground as he was moving. I loved his chaotic energy. I love that they went dark with Luffy as he was as he was transforming, as he was turning into Sun God Nika and it, it all went dark for a little while. His eyes looked crazy. If you managed to remain spoiler free for Gear 5th until you saw it on the anime, what an experience it must have been to have seen that for the first time like that. To see it where it looked ominous and confused confusing and maybe a little bit scary like what's happening to Luffy is something bad happening right now and you are unsure and then it turns into this wacky crazy he's moving around and the ground is becoming uh, rubber as well his eyes popping out of his head and everything he touches going elastic like that's so crazy and if you didn't know like don't get me wrong chapter 1044 that's the first chapter I read after I caught up being becoming a week to week reader. So it was a monumental week for me. It was a monumental moment for me. It's still one of my all time favorite chapters in the entire manga. But if you had gotten to see that for the first time, no spoilers, I can't imagine what an experience that could have been because it was amazing for me. Seeing Luffy rolling around on the ground gut laughing, giggling himself into a fit. Oh my goodness, Luffy's voice actor is astounding to be able to pull off that kind of chaotic, borderline psychotic joy. Oh my goodness. And then all the sound effects were going like crazy, the drums of liberation that were playing. It was astounding. Downing. My one complaint is the same complaint that I have about the manga chapter, and that's that I really don't think that Oda should have put Luffy's evolution at the same time as Hiyori's moment with Orochi. Now, don't get me wrong, I love that moment. I think that it's a phenomenal scene. And I understand the importance of giving Luffy's full transformation, the revelation of him being the bringer of joy, the drums of liberation coming in, the liberation of Wano, having that happen in parallel with the, the, with the Shogun's daughter standing up against her oppressor, speaking out against what he's done and, and against the, the trickery and betrayal and how he's oppressed these people, getting Luffy Luffy taking down Kaido in the same scene that Hiyori is taking down Orochi. It's phenomenal and thematically, I 100% understand why Oda wanted to do it, but I think that Luffy's Joy Boy chapter should have stood on its own with no interruptions from anything else that was happening on the scene. And I feel the same way about the anime, cutting away from Luffy to give Hiyori her moment. To me, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, but I wanna get back to what Luffy is doing, even though I also, at the same time, am, lo am loving what's happening to Yori. So I just wish that each of them could have had their time to breathe rather than trying to compile them together, even though thematically I, it, it makes sense. I just think that both moments should have gotten all the time that they needed instead of having a shared chapter slash episode. That said, my goodness, it was such a good episode. It was, I'm, I'm not a, I, again, I'm not an anime expert, so I can't tell you how awesome the, the animation was or get into the nitty gritty of like, angles or I don't know. All I know is that the voice acting was astounding 
For Hiori as well, the hatred in her voice was phenomenal. So the voice acting was astounding. Being able to get the heart, the, the, the intention, the core of what this is and then elevating it. Oh my goodness, I loved it so much. Okay, onto the chapter because that's probably what you clicked on this video for. So, 1089, also a phenomenal chapter. Starting off with an earthquake that's happening all around the world. So what? <laughs> Admittedly, I'm still a little bit confused because you have an island that was established and then it was destroyed. It was erased from history. And now there's a gaping hole in the ground that the water is pouring into, but the tides are rising. Should they not be falling? I have many questions. I watched a couple people's Leo, vi couple people's videos. I watched Liam's video, Sawyer's video, and Teching's video, and they all seem to understand this better than I do, and they helped me to understand it a little bit. I don't fully understand the mechanics of it. I'm just really, really happy that something is happening. Because <laughs> in the very, in the last chapter, I was complaining that it kind of bothers me that a lot of times in animated fiction, when earth bending is a factor, um, it doesn't affect the earth the way it should. So for instance, with uh, the Island Island guy's fruit, he's picking up entire land masses. There's, there's no cave-ins. The earth is fine. All the geography around this mass of earth, sorry, knocked my laptop. This mass of earth that's just been lifted up. All of this earth around it is just like, yeah, we're good. We'll stay put. I just, no, that's <laughs> not the way it works. So I was just really, really happy to see this massive island disappearing from existence and everything around it is devastatingly affected because it should be. So thank you, Oda, for doing that. But also, why did you check in with everybody but Long Ring, Long Land, and Water 7? Because those are the ones that I'm the most concerned about. Like, are those islands gone too? Are we just, is everybody just dead? I mean, I realize that with Lulisha, it's possible that if it is a matter of island debris being scattered about, then you know, they all survived. Everybody survived. They're just all in their little lifeboat island pieces. So Long Ring Long Land is also, everybody had scuba gear or something, <laughs> something. Like probably, probably everybody's fine. I just wanna know what happened to those islands. But that panel, is stunning of Lulisha, of the the earthquake caused a worldwide sea level to rise about a meter, that, that where we actually see the gaping hole that's been created by this weapon, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful, devastating panel and I love it. Also in regards to the hole, obviously this looks a lot like the hole over in Eslabi, so that kind of, probably answers the question of what happened here previously. This must have been another kingdom that was completely wiped from existence by Emu and the elders because they dare disobey, they dare rebel against them. And that just is very interesting to me for many reasons, but I think the one that stands out to me the most is the implications, the audacity of the world government to say, you dare rebel against me. You dare defy me. So I'll not only wipe you off of the map, but over the gaping hole that's left of your lives, I'll build a justice center. I'll build something that's a reminder that we decide what justice is here. Like, oh my goodness, that the impact of that statement of just building their justice center there, that statement of we are justice, we decide what justice is, you don't. If you try to, we get rid of you and we build our justice on top of your, of your termination. Like the tenacity of that statement of building it there is so impactful and so well without any words shows what this world government is about. And I love that. I love that statement that's made without words. We also get a quick check in with the admirals and others that are uh, that are on their way into, they are trying to get into Egghead, uh, but they can't get in because Egghead has been closed off off. Let's see, what did it say? The Frontier Dome barrier status is at 100%, meaning that nothing can get in and nothing can get out. So they're just chilling, 
trying, waiting to see if they can get in or out. And I just want to take a second to appreciate Saturn, my favorite of the elders so far, which I know, I know, we're not team emu in this house, but Saturn had some really cool lines, like when he said, Straw Hat Crew barricades himself in with Vegapunk as prisoner, eh? I like this article. And what's the truth? I love that. Like, Oda always kind of gives nods to, like, the corruption of the powers that be, but I love that just kind of matter of fact, ooh, nice title. That works to my benefit. And what's the truth? Because I know that's not it. Like, I, I'm aware of the corruption. I love that. I also love his ruthlessness when he asks where the researchers and technicians of Egghead are, and he said that they escaped, and Saturn was like, and what if they know too much? sink them. Ah, oh, that was just a really cool line. And then his matter of fact way of speaking about Bonnie, uh, she has no more benefit to us. Leave her there. She's just a girl. Which I know this has caused a lot of conversation about how old is Bonnie? Which the answer is, I don't know. None of us know. We'll figure it out. But the point is that was a cool line and probably, you know, Saturn's forever years old. So he's probably just being an old man being like, you know, everybody a couple decades younger than me is a young whippersnapper. But also as we're talking about the fleets that are outside of Egghead Island, I also want to take a moment to talk about Kizaru because seeing Kizaru actually have to take Luffy seriously once he sees how far he's advanced and how he's, he's nothing like he was the last time they met, the last time when Kizaru wiped the floor with his entire crew, seeing what what Luffy is capable of now and have to step up his game is going to be amazing. Assuming Kizaru isn't held back for whatever reason, he, there isn't a blockade, there isn't going to be somebody that steps in between him and Luffy or him and the crew or whatever. Assuming that there's nothing that's going to be an obstacle from Kizaru actually going toe to toe with these guys this next chapter is going to be incredible. And finally, we have York calling in and they say the mother flame. They say that the, the elders say that they want York to be able to create the mother flame. Uh, she says that she can, but the power plant that creates it is on this island. So please don't destroy the island. Please don't destroy the, the all, all the things he, here that we need in order to create this. Please don't destroy me. First of all, what do you think the Mother Flame is? I've seen ancient weapon thrown around. I've seen some sort of energy source thrown around. What do you think it is? I don't have any idea. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's an ancient weapon, but I do think that I lean towards it's something that the world government can use in order to continue to dominate, in order to continue to force their rule or something that they want to use against Luffy. I know that none of this is inspiring because it's so vague. I just don't really think that it's an ancient weapon, but I haven't really decided what I think it is yet. So I'd love to hear your theories. But regardless, York has called in. She said that she can do this. And then we cut to the final spread, which is the straw hat standing over York and her crying for help. Now I have a lot of thoughts. So let's just give me a second to get through them all. One, oh my goodness, this spread looks so good. Look at how cool our crew looks. Look at Luffy standing there just so non-fussed eating because he's always eating. Look at Zoro with his knife to her neck and that smirk that I'm not worried, I'm not fussed, this is easy, I got you by the throat kind of smirk, my goodness. And Usopp also stands out to me, the one holding the phone in front of her mouth, saying he's got the earpiece, he's the one in control here, holding it up, basically saying, you know, say what we tell you to say or else Zoro will take you out. Like, ah, ugh, those three especially look incredible in this spread. Naturally, also Robin's not here. Neither are Sessi or Kaku. So where are they all? I don't know. I hope Robin is learning more about the Void Century. I hope that she's found some research because in this very chapter, we have Kizaru saying, um, studying the Void Century is a crime even I can't defend. So obviously this is like, we, we have to handle this because studying the Void Century is something that cannot be allowed to happen. So I hope right now that's exactly what Robin is doing. My first thought in noticing that she wasn't here was that, oh, she's been captured <laughs> because in the reverie we did a bingo board. Like what's the one thing that you think is gonna happen? And I went with Robin is gonna be captured uh, because in Wano, they said they wanted to do that. But I don't think that actually happened because in this very chapter it said no one gets in, no one gets out. We're at 100% shields. 
there's no in or out happening right now. So I don't think, I don't think Robin's been captured unless there's a second person on the island that's gonna betray everybody, which I don't think is what's happening. So I hope she's taking her time to study the Void Sentry. That feels very Robin to me. But also in the panel, we have Bonnie who stands out very strongly right next to Luffy, chowing down as well, looking directly at him, shouting that this is like a hostage situation, <laughs> which I love. And Luchi is uselessly standing in the background. I am so frustrated about, okay, I love this arc. Egghead has been a phenomenal arc. I love it so much. I'm so frustrated that Egghead has taken one of my favorite villains that we've, and not my favorite, Crocodile will always be, but one of my favorite villains that we've faced, Lucci, and kind of ruined him. <laughs> I don't really like Lucci anymore. And that's a real bummer for me because I really, really loved him in Water 7 and in his lobby. And yeah, he's just kind of been standing in the background for the most part or if he gets a fight panel or some kind of speaking panel, I don't know. He's just, he's been so very underwhelming in this arc. And that's such a bum ski because I actually really love him or did, I did. And also he did say, next time I see you, or not next time I see you, he did say, once we're done teaming up, once we're done working together, we're enemies again. So what are you doing standing there? Attack him. Are you just so intimidated now that you've seen how strong he is that you don't want to attack him again? I don't care. Go away. Go away, Lucci. Go away. Anyway, we got a time skip. We did not pick back up exactly where we left off. We, uh, <laughs> essentially, we were, we were in peril. We had, we had, we had people that were down. We had people that were, wasn't Usopp knocked out or something? Like, we had, we had, we were all, bad situations were happening. And then all of a sudden, cut away to the world, which was awesome, cut back, and straw hats are on top. And there's something really awesome about that for me anyway. I really like it because it's been a long time since, we, since we've seen the straw hats, a really, really long time. So cutting back to them, essentially exhibiting that, yeah, they are the crew of an emperor of the sea. They are the crew of the one who bears the will of sun god Nika. Yeah, they've got this under control. Like there's something very like hype <laughs> about cutting back to them that way. Now, I'm gonna take all this back and claim that I never said it if we don't immediately get a flash, or not immediately, it doesn't have to be immediately, but very soon get a flashback explaining what happened here? Because I would like to see it. I would I would like to watch it happen. Don't off page all that. And even more so, like 50,000 times more so, show me Kuma's flashback. <laughs> Bonnie's just chilling in this panel, mowing down on food, hanging out, talking about a kidnapping situation. Ma'am, are you not distraught? <laughs> Are you not still overwhelmed with emotions? What happened? Was Kuma's flashback not really very satisfying? And so you're just like, eh, we don't need to talk about it. What happened? So Oda, give me a really good Kuma flashback. I'll forgive a lot of things. Don't, don't take that from me. I, I need to know what happened. Don't off page it. Give me a really, take your time. And please, this is the mystery that I've been hanging on to since Sabayoti for a really long time. This is something that I've been holding on to for really, Kuma has been my number one. This is the question that I want answered in the entire series for most of my reading life of One Piece, which so like a year, less time than you, I realize, but I, I'm dramatic, so let me talk. So please, please give me a satisfying flashback for Kuma. Give me a big mom flashback, not a Kaido flashback. Beyond that, I'll forgive a lot. But anyway, I'm looking forward to the flashback of Kuma. I'm looking forward to, forward to the flashback of Egghead Island to see what we missed in order for Oda to reintroduce the Straw Hat crews and crew in this really epic way. I'm into it as long as it as long as it's satisfying on the back end. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to the confrontation that's to come with the admirals coming in and Kizaru versus Luffy. It's gonna be amazing. And I'm excited to learn more about what's going on in the wider sphere of the world. I'm just excited about a lot of things. Awesome episode this week. 
awesome chapter this week. What did you think? I'd love to talk about them with you as well. I do live reactions on my Patreon if you like to see that. We have the live action coming up soon, which I'm so excited about. So talk to me about any of those things in the comments. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the Review channel, where I talk about what I'm reading week to week. I'll see you again soon.